So I've decided I want to do a series on prehistory, but I realised in order to give some context as to what I'm on about, I need to make a video, even though people probably already know about time periods, I need to make a video defining each time period. Now to give a little background behind this series, I think I'm basically just going to be going from the Precambrian to the Quaternary, what we are currently in, and basically giving a little summary of each one. So time to get onto the demonstration, the timeline, the diagram, the whiteboard. So I hope this isn't too much of an awkward angle, but here we are. Welcome to the whiteboard. Let's get the pens. So when I say time period, although I do mean that we are going to be going from the Precambrian to the Quaternary, and those are classified as time periods, what I mean by this is more of a geological time chart. Now bear in mind, the general unit of measure for each time division is in millions of years. So each eon, era, time period and epoch will be divided in terms of a million years, if that makes sense. So let's pen. I'm gonna divide this up into four categories. Please ignore how wobbly and uneven this is. It's fine for our purposes. So we start off with the biggest chunk of time and that is an eon. So most people tend to say that there are two major eons, however, it's debatable. The two major eons being the Precambrian and the Phanerozoic. Now, the Precambrian has a few separate eons in it, like the Hadean, the Archean. That was way back when Earth first formed. However, just to keep it simple, we have the Precambrian, which spans for 88% of the Earth's current history, and the Phanerozoic, which spans from 543 or 541, depending on who you ask, million years ago to the current day. Now, for exemplary purposes, I'm just gonna write the Phanerozoic here, so we can divide that up as we go along. Right, next, we are moving on to an era. Now, eras essentially divide up time periods into groups. So for example, we have the famous Age of Dinosaurs, the Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous, which all together would make up one era, the Mesozoic. And that lasted from 252 million years ago to 66, when of course, there was the KT extinction. Now there are two other eras in the Phanerozoic, which are the Paleozoic, before the dinosaurs, which includes the time periods of the Cambrian, Ordovican, Silurian, Devonian and Permian. And then there is the Cenozoic, which includes the tertiary and the quaternary periods. Now, as the age of dinosaurs are the most popular paleontological time period to study, that is the one that I'm gonna be focusing on. So as you can see, I've just gone and drawn out the eras of the Phanerozoic, but we are gonna be focusing on the Mesozoic right now. So. We move on to the time periods. I just realized that I wrote period in red. <laughs> so time periods are probably the most well-known form of geological time division. And this is where we find our Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous, as well as the others. This is breaking down time into finer groups. Eras are generally more generalistic. For example, the Paleozoic, we've got the Cambrian explosion of life, which leads on to more complex marine life forms, age of fish, plants beginning to come on land, then amphibians, insects, all of that. Mesozoic, dinosaurs. Cenozoic, mammals. And then us, apparently. So, if I just magnify the Mesozoic for a second, in this era, we have the three time periods. So, imagine we have zoomed into the Mesozoic. So we have the Cretaceous, Jurassic, Triassic, the age of dinosaurs. Now, Triassic's when they first came about, the Cretaceous is when they died out. Good rhyme to remember. Now each time period generally lasts for a few tens of millions of years, sometimes over a hundred, as the Cretaceous kind of almost did. 
lasting from, for example, 145 million years ago to 66 million years ago. Now, time periods are generally split up on a basis of major changes in geological strata as well as changes in the fossil record. So, now that we have that established, I propose we move on to epochs. So I'm just gonna sit down here for a bit because my knees are dying. So epochs, or epochs, however you want to pronounce it, are, as you might have guessed, a further breakdown of time periods. Essentially, as you may realize, life and geology are constantly changing and geologists and paleontologists feel the need to break down time into as small a chunks as they possibly can muster and any major change that they find if it qualifies as a not big enough for a time period but big enough to be given a name then it has become an epoch now epochs come in various forms with various names some of them are simple like in the Jurassic when you have the early, mid and late which is quite simple, opposed to the tertiary, which is like Pliocene, Miocene, Oligocene, Eocene, Ple Ple Pleistocene. I did not say those in order, but you get the gist. So, if we do a little magnifying glass once again, you can see in the Jurassic we've got the late, mid, and early Jurassic. Some epochs, if they are that large, will again be broken down into late, mid, and early themselves which we find with some of the earlier time periods. However, that's essentially that. If, again, geologists feel the need to break the time down even further, then you find the geological division of ages, which I'm not gonna go into because it's just like very small slices of time. I just don't feel the need to talk about that in such depth. So I hope that wasn't confusing. I hope I made sense. I hope you can see this and I hope you learn something in preparation for what is to come. Thank you Shane for watching. Subscribe if you want to. Cheers. Goodbye. Paleozoic and in paleontolo in the Oh Jesus. Oh my legs, my knees. Okay. Oh that's not straight.